This is KGW News at Sunrise. And hate has no place in Portland or in the state of Oregon. City and state leaders urging people who want to pick a fight to stay away. With dueling <clears throat> rallies planned for the weekend, police worry things could get violent and they're pleading for peace. We'll break down what we know this morning. Even after her death, the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is still making history. And this morning, Congress will honor her in a way that's never been done before as the first woman to ever lie in state at the U.S. Capitol. Also, Nina and Brenda, we're talking football on this Friday because the Pac-12 is coming back. The conference says it will play football this fall, so we're going to let you know exactly when we can see the Ducks, the Beavs, the Cougars, the Huskies, the rest of the Pac-12 back in action. That is a big darn deal. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. We are so close to the weekend. Yes, let's get our day going with a look at our forecast and the wall of rain, Ron. <laughs> yes, and may I quote Brenda Braxton, the radar is a big darn deal today. Take a look. Uh, it hasn't quite arrived yet into Portland and Salem, but look at that steady rain band that's parked along the coast and the yellow, bright orange colors that extend back. So this is going to be um, developing rain, and it will be widespread across our area no later than 7. I mean, widespread all the way into the Cascades by that time. I do stand corrected. You can see a little bit of light rain is now moving into Salem. The heaviest rains will come mid-morning through about 10 or 11 o'clock. Um, and then we still have afternoon showers coming. Temperatures will be in the 60s today. And look for some gusty southwest winds around 9, 10 o'clock to pick up this morning as well. Uh, we'll have your weekend forecast shortly. All right. Thank you, Rod. We begin this morning with another night of violent protests in Portland. Officers declared an unlawful assembly as a crowd marched on the police union building on North Lombard. 14 people were arrested. Police say one person set fire to a piece of plywood on the building's front door. Another person tried to set fire to an awning. Officers say they did not use any crowd control munitions and cleared the group by one o'clock this morning. Organizers of a far right rally set for tomorrow at Delta Park in Portland say the city denying them a permit will not stop them. The Proud Boys were denied due to COVID concerns. We should add Portland hasn't approved any permits for protests this summer, although you technically don't need a permit to protest. Left wing counter protesters are also planning to gather at Delta Park Saturday and at Peninsula Park a few miles away. Arguments between these groups turned violent in the past, including the night a man was shot and killed downtown last month. Portland Police Chief Chuck Lavelle is pleading for peace. Um, it's okay for us to disagree about things, but at the end of the day, um, doing so peacefully, um, letting people exercise their rights uh, safely is very important. So that's my ask. Both Oregon State Police and the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office rejected requests from PPB to help control the crowds. They cited concerns over Mayor Wheeler's recent ban on tear gas. City, county and state leaders have also urged anyone coming to Portland intent on picking a fight to stay away. Well, city and state leaders are discussing ways to keep the peace and protect speech this weekend. Governor Kate Brown will lay out their plans in a press conference at 10 o'clock this morning. Our wildfire covers this morning starts with the weather because we know the rain this week has been a huge help to firefighters. In fact, today, some evacuation orders are set to change in Marion County at 9 o'clock this morning. Detroit, Idana and the Elkhorn community along North Fork Road all being reduced to a level two evacuation order. That being said, there are still parts of Highway 22 that are closed right now because of fallen trees and debris, and that means anyone trying to get back to those communities will have to be guided in by law enforcement. Some more positive news for you this morning. Containment improving with all the major fires in Oregon. The Beachy Creek Fire now stands at 49% containment. The Holiday Farm Fire east of Eugene is at 35%, and the Riverside Fire in Clackamas County is just about the same at 34 percent. Check this out now, a local photographer giving us a different view of the Echo Mountain fire. That's the one that destroyed hundreds of homes there in Lincoln County. Matt Brandt used his drone to get this video that he shared with us because he said he wanted everyone to see exactly what the people who live there are dealing with. 
He also took some individual pictures of properties in that area for any of the homeowners who wanted them. For a lot of them, they're still in shock. You know, they're, they're focused more on survival than I think focusing on the emotional side of it. You know, for a lot of them, it's going to take months, um, years to process this. The Echo Mountain Fire did reach 100% containment this week, but not before burning almost 300 homes. Brant says a lot of people in Lincoln County are coping right now by helping each other out. If you'd like to help, we have information for you in the online version of this story at KGW.com. As if people who've lost their homes in the wildfires don't have enough to worry about, the DEQ is now warning of hidden dangers in the piles of debris. With evacuation levels being lowered, many people are eager to return home and begin the process of rebuilding. But as our Mike Benner reports, they need to take some serious precautions. So many families are sifting through the rubble that was once their home. We met the Dotsons of Estacada last week. There's nobody to be mad at. I mean, wish we would have taken more stuff. Retrieving belongings can be a daunting task and a potentially dangerous one, according to the Department of Environmental Quality. We're really urging people to not disturb the ash and fire debris on their properties. Laura Glime of the DEQ says hidden in the rubble may be asbestos, toxic chemicals, and electrical hazards, among other things. The state of Oregon has requested federal assistance to come in and clear off properties so that people can begin rebuilding. Glime is well aware that not everybody will wait for that federal assistance before rebuilding. She's pleading with people heading back to their properties to do so safely. Wear protective gear, including boots and goggles and a properly fitted N95 or KN95 respirator. Safety is the key as families return home in the wake of wildfires that left behind immeasurable devastation. It's still a dream, a nightmare that I hope to wake up from, but probably going to still be the same outcome. Laura Glim says something else to keep in mind. Do not use leaf blowers or anything similar at these properties as they could stir up ash and particles that could be dangerous. We'll have additional safety tips on our website, kgw.com. I'm Mike. Now for the latest numbers in the pandemic, Oregon reported the largest number of new cases since mid-August, and you can see it right here on the end of this graph, 382 cases, two more deaths, and it shows that there, those cases are starting to trend upward again after dropping during our last part of summer. Multnomah County saw the most new cases, followed by Washington and Lane counties. The Oregon Health Authority says the rising case numbers are a reminder we still need to keep distance and wear masks. Weather is actually one of our big stories this morning. Rod says we will have an active weather day. So more with Rod here in about a moment. But we also have a big sports story we needed to talk about this morning. The Pac-12 conference says football will happen after all this fall. Orlando Sanchez is stepping in right now to explain why the Pac-12 reversed field on its COVID concerns and when we'll actually see football back on the playing field. Good morning, everyone. The Ducks and Beavers are playing football this fall, and it was a unanimous decision within the Pac-12 conference to resume play in 2020, with kickoff set for November 6th. Here's what was decided on Thursday's Pac-12 meeting with the conference presidents and chancellors. Games begin November 6th, and each team will play seven games this season. The Pac-12 championship will be played on December 18th. The schedule planned to be released sometime next week. At this point, fans will not be able to attend games. Commissioner Larry Scott said what really got the conversation going was the conference acquiring rapid COVID-19 testing. They feel more comfortable identifying and managing the risks of COVID-19 than they did last month when they decided to shut down sports. Oregon President Michael Schill said he met with athletes and they expressed their desire to play. And COVID-19 has taken so much away from these students. I didn't want to take this away from them. And so if I could feel comfortable with their health and their safety, that we weren't jeopardizing it, then to give them this ability to fulfill their dreams was something that I felt I should vote in favor of. The conference also announced that men's and women's basketball can start on November 25th. A schedule for those sports will be announced at a later date. The conference also approved the start of winter sports like swimming and diving, wrestling, and gymnastics. Back to you. 
Thank you, Orlando Sanchez. Now we have Mr. Rodney Hill. So, Rod, uh, we do have sports to yeah. talk about this morning, but you came on to the uh, call this morning, our Zoom call at 4 a.m., saying, hey, gang, yeah. active weather day. So get to it, my friend. Yeah, and most of it will happen in the morning hours. Take a look at Doppler radar right now. This steady rain band has snuggled itself up along the coast, and we're already seeing some light shower activity push into Salem. But the rain's going to be picking up for most of us in the next hour, hour and a half. And then it will be steady pretty much all the way into the noon hour. Here we are at 7 a.m. And again, the yellow and orange colors, those are moderate to heavy rain pockets. So a pretty good clip of rain coming down. Here we are at 10. And this could be kind of a bullseye time of the winds all of a sudden picking up from the southwest. And we can see some gusts of 30, 35 miles per hour as the main uh, system starts to cross uh, our region. And then by early afternoon, 1 p.m., now the steady rain band has dropped down to our south of Portland, still raining in Salem. And then we'll go on to see um, at least, you know, I think quite a few showers at times scattered this afternoon into this evening. Now, the great news about this map, which shows you how much rain is going to fall mostly this morning, and then we'll tack on a few showers into early tomorrow morning. But it does show widespread precipitation. In fact, this gives nearly a quarter of an inch in Ben, nearly a quarter of an inch in John Day, soaking rains up and down the Cascades. And then uh, I'd say on average, Salem, Portland, a half of an inch, maybe not as much uh, in Salem, could be more in Portland, especially more than a half of an inch up into Cowlitz County, where you folks could be more like three quarters of an inch in Kelso and Longview. Forecast temperatures will be steady in the 60s today. The gusty winds picking up at times. This morning, um, Longview 63 degrees, and here comes a seven-day. Mainly dry tomorrow. I've been going back and forth on my Facebook um, with uh, a woman. I can't remember if they're getting married or they're renewing their vows. Hmm, I should know that. But it's tomorrow. So I think tomorrow, if you get wet, you're really unlucky. So take that for what it's worth. Rodney, Sunday looks dry. It's dry. <laughs> <laughs> you're so bad. <laughs> Plug your ears. Okay, when we come back, we're going to have your national headlines in your morning rush. And Brenda, you're introducing us to another wildfire hero. I am, and this is a sweet story about a husband, father, and captain for the U.S. Forest Service. Still ahead on Sunrise, a family reunion after a long summer fighting wildfires. Plus, flu season is here. There are plenty of places to get a shot, but when is the best time? We'll have your answer in this morning's Verify.